Ken, the attorney general from the great state of Texas. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Pretty crazy stuff going on right now, as usual. I know. Um, thank you for joining us. I know you're 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 getting ready for your argument uh, with the appellate court uh, today. Can you tell me what happened yesterday? The Supreme Court said Texas can begin arresting, and then I get up this morning, and the appellate court says, "No, no, no, not so fast." Well, this is one of the more confusing and maybe inexplicable things I've witnessed in the court. So it started off in district court with the Biden administration and a little group called the ACLU sued us saying that SB4 was unconstitutional. We didn't have the right to expel anybody from the country, no matter how bad they were. So we, the judge in, that they, you know, where they filed the lawsuit put an injunction on our law so it couldn't go into effect on March 4th, the date it was supposed to go into effect. We appealed that. A three-judge panel ruled in our favor. We got the uh, the stay lifted, but they put what's called an administrative stay on it to give the Supreme Court a chance to review it. It goes up to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court says, uh, no, fi- fine, 6-0. Uh, it can go into effect. And so we're good. We're happy. Within hours, we are notified by a new panel of the Supreme Court. Uh, Priscilla Owen is, a, I think, a Bush appointee. And then uh, we have a liberal judge appointed by one of the Democrats, and we had Andy Oldham, who ruled in our favor. So we lost two to one. They put another stay back in, but then they ordered us to have a a hearing within less than 12 hours from finding out. So actually, my guy is arguing by Zoom right now uh, at the court in in New Orleans, the Fifth Circuit, and that three-judge panel. So it's a really odd argument because they – removed the stay, but then they said that's what the argument's about. So it's it's almost like they've already decided, but they still want us to argue the case. I, I don't know. I've never Why? seen it like it. I don't understand it. It's bizarre. Yeah, I, I was talking to Mike Lee today, um, and he said, you know, stays are usually to stay from harm. What we have going on here is a whole lot of harm. We have crime. We have killers. We have just a, a just an invasion of our border, uh, and and it should be that the the court should say no no no, let them arrest until we look at everything. Instead, the harm that is is being perceived, I guess, by this court is to the illegal alien. Yes, to the illegal alien and to the Biden administration's partnership with the cartels. That's that's the harm. We are harming the cartel relationship. And that's I don't know how else to put it. If the court defends this, if they block us from enforcing legitimate path law by the legislature signed by the governor, then they are saying we want to protect any harm that might come to the, the illegal immigrants and to the Biden administration's work with the cartels. That's the reality where we're at now. So what is your guy arguing? I wish we could listen in. He's arguing exactly what you're saying, that, that, that there's no harm, and let this law stay in effect. Let us argue the merits of the case, and you, you let us have the opportunity to, to uphold and defend a pur- you know, purposely enacted law by the Texas legislature. The people. So when is— When are they going when, to—when is this going to be decided— uh, I, I mean, I know the didn't. stay is for today, the trial. I guess they would announce something within a couple of days on the on the stay. But I think it, what about the full I think it case? Might be like fast. I mean, they, they've already removed the stay. So I mean, the or the administrative stay of the stay. So confusing because uh, there was a you know a stay in place, and then they had an administrative administrative stay of the stay. That's, that's why it's so hard to explain. <laughs> so. The, the, what they would do is, I I think they're going to rule very quickly because look how fast they went. They the Supreme Court, you know, gave us the uh, the victory yesterday afternoon, and by you know within an hour or two, the Fifth Circuit, Priscilla Owen and this other judge said, no, you can't. This law can't stay in effect. We're going to let the stay go back into effect that the original judge put in place, and now you have to argue this tomorrow at ten ten in the morning, which I've never had an argument turn around that fast. On something so significant, and, but even on something minor. I mean, it's just that's what's so strange about this. That's part of it. And it's also strange that the Fifth Circuit would sort of 
step past the Supreme Court and say, well, we're going to we're going to yeah. stop this from going in effect. And it's despite the fact that exactly what you said, the harm is to Texas. There is no harm to the I mean, I will acknowledge harm to the cartels. I will acknowledge that they are being harmed and that they're <laughs> able to get people in here. It is true. We are harming the cartels. Right. So if right. that's what we're trying to harm protect, to the drug industry, it, harm to the fentanyl pushers, harm to the, Chinese, the drug the traffickers, government. the human traffickers. Yeah. So, yes, I, yes. I Venezuela. will acknowledge that in public, in court, anywhere, we are harming them. Yes. Um, so that, that was the other question, and you just touched on it. How does a lower court usurp the Supreme Court? So they basically, the Supreme Court just put it back down to the Fifth Circuit and said, we're not, we're not going to uh, undo the administrative stay of the stay. And so they 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 left our our law in place, but the Fifth Circuit still has control of the case right now because it's back down with them, and they can they can rule however they want, and they can protect you know if they want to protect the, the cartels, they can protect the cartels. It's, it's 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 within their power to do that. Another thing that happened overnight, and this is the first thing I was worried uh, worried about. I saw this late last night. Um, and then I saw, oh, well, we don't have to worry about that as much as we do maybe uh, people inside our own country. The president of Mexico said Texas isn't going to return anybody to the border of Mexico or fly them into Mexico, which made me think of the 18,000 people that we finally got out of Afghanistan. We were thwarted by the uh, Department of State every day. All the time, several times a day. We had a plane with refugees in the air, and uh, we had a place to land. Another country had already okayed it, and the State Department called and said, uh, we can't vouch for that plane, so I wouldn't lo- allow it to land. And they they stopped us from flying any place. Can the, can the governments do that to well, I Texas? I I, I, it seems wrong to me. I mean, look, we also have this case, the Supreme Court just knocked out our, um, we had an injunction from the Fifth Circuit that stopped the, you know, the, the 30,000 people that they're flying in, flying in from Venezuela, Nicaragua, Cuba, Cuba, and uh, Venezuela. So 30,000 a year, a month are being flown in. We're paying for it. State, the state, the, the, the country is paying for this. The Biden administration is paying for it. It's completely illegal. And we had an injunction to stop it. And the Supreme Court just literally, like, I think it was a week ago, got rid of our injunction. So now those 30,000 people don't even have to come to the border. We're paying for them to come to the country illegally. I can't make this stuff up. I don't, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out the distinction between an injunction and a stay. What okay. the difference it's, it's is a, there, but <laughs> it, it's all. I'm sorry, it's all. It's language that it, that they use. But no, I know. Basically, we had an injunction stopping the Biden administration from importing right. thirty thousand people a month from those four countries, the the four I mentioned, and the Supreme Court six to three said no. The injunction goes away. Go back and litigate this case. So here we are. We now have. <laughs> 30,000 people a month, and we can't stop it until we get through this case, which is going to take us, you know, who knows how long. So 30, every month, 30,000 more, we're paying for this, are going all over, the, all over the country from those four countries I mentioned. And then on top of that, now Texas has an injunction stopping us from enforcing our own laws, uh, protecting our state from illegal immigration. So it, it's very frustrating because it seems like it's – even when we get rulings that allow us to go back to court – they're the rulings that allow it to take years. And so, you know, a year goes by and another 350,000 yeah. people fly across the border. They don't even go to Border Patrol anymore. They just fly in. Ken, I, I'm sure you know this because you live in Texas as well. Um, you know, there, there's an old saying, don't mess with Texas. And, um, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, whichever way you want to look at it, um, a lot of Texans mean that. And uh, a lot of Texans are seeing this as an invasion, and they're seeing this out-of-control government, um, you know, doing exactly what you just said, and destroying us, intentionally poisoning us. And there's a lot of Texans that I, I think are, you know, kind of up to here. How do we? 
how do we diffuse this um this back and forth how do we diffuse it so it just doesn't get to a boiling point that you you can't turn down uh look i i mean all we can do i i have lawyers people all the time say why don't you do more i'm like well the, the, the legislature gives me lawyers. They don't give me tanks or anything else. So I just go and fight where I can fight. I think eventually if, if you have such disdain, if the federal government has such disdain for the law and the Constitution, then eventually the people have a right to, to, to say, no, we're not putting up with this anymore. And, and the Declaration of Independence is, is clear on that. These rights are inalienable. They're from God. They're not from Joe Biden. They're not from Donald Trump. They are inalienable. And we have a right to those rights. And eventually the people have to find a way to overcome that. And what that is, I don't know. But hopefully the next election will speak to that. And those rights will start being honored as fundamental rights to human beings. That is um, one of the most um, amazing statements I think I've ever heard from a government official. Um, um I, I hope we. I hope the next election with you. I hope the next election solves these things, because we're in constitutional crisis after constitutional crisis. We are on it's, our way. It's got to stop. We are not there. If we're not there now, we don't have a constitutional republic. If if the rule of law and the constitution can be put aside, set aside, and and flipped to mean anything that you know a few justices think it means, and they can dishonor fundamental rights that were guaranteed in our constitution, then now we're back to the declaration of independence. And that is a a big place to be, as you know. Yeah. Ken Paxton, God bless you. Thank you. Um, We'll pray for your win today. God bless Thank you. The attorney general of uh, the great state of Texas. Why do I feel like history? We just lived history.